Hey, it's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, love saying that. Today, you are going to get to meet Chelsea Crisp. I've been following Chelsea's career for a while. I actually had a chance to meet her when I moved to LA and connected through another friend, actor friend of ours, shout out to Dewan Johnson. And Chelsea is just like all things funny. Like, of course she does drama too. You've seen her in ABC's Fresh Off the Boat. You know her from as Jessie in the indie rom-com In Lawfully Yours. Also, she's going to be in the upcoming UK remake of Call My Agent, which I'm super excited about. And she's also been on NBC's Young Rock. Her resume is nice and long. Those are just a little bit, a little bit of highlights. But, you know, this conversation, this was, ugh, I know I say it each time, like all these conversations are just so juicy. And Chelsea gave so many nuggets. Like you'll see, like I just had to pause a few times because there were a few things, gems that she dropped I had to sit with that I'm still sitting with. You know, it's always nice to talk to people who work their way up the ranks in this industry. Like nothing was handed to them overnight. And there's a different level of appreciation and gratitude and, and realness and understanding that comes with that. So buckle up, okay? It's, this is a straight no chaser conversation. Okay, you've been warned, but enjoy this interview with Chelsea Crisp. Chelsea! Hi! I feel best to be Oprah moment. Chelsea! <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. Happy 2022. Happy 2022! Yes, I haven't seen you in some years. I know we wow. used to get to meet and have and play at Dwan's house for our actor group and, you know, yeah. COVID, you know, all that. But we were in the middle of what, what was, it was pilot season 2020 and we were all regularly meeting at Dewan's and I remember there was one where it was, I don't know, it was like five or six of us and we were all like, should we, should we be here? And like <laughs> two days later, everything shut down. <laughs> 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 So our pilot group is very attached as like, oh, that old life we used to love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, gratefully, you know, a lot of us have been have been working and still connected in some way. Yeah. And that's I know you guys are tuning into the middle of a conversation, but I think what we're talking about really is the power of community mm -hmm. and and having a circle that you can tap into for inspiration, for guidance and sometimes just for a shoulder to cry on if that's necessary, too. Yep. <laughs> Kelsey, man, you have such a lovely body of work. I mean, I know a lot of people know you from Fresh Off the Boat, Young Rock, and call, I am so excited to see you in Call My Agent. That's exciting. I'm still, I'm still early in the series, and um, okay, I'm loving it so much. But you know, before we dive into all of that, I'm really curious how, where are you from? How did you even get started in entertainment and acting? Yeah, so I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and. There isn't an entertainment industry there to speak of. There are a handful of theaters. Uh, I was I didn't come from a family that had any foothold in the entertainment industry. Um, my parents were, it was just not even, like I wasn't raised watching musicals or going to plays or anything. It wasn't a part of how they were raised. So it wasn't until, um, my parents say I was always, I always was a storyteller. I was always, you know, kind of like getting getting my neighbors together to do a little show or something. I was singing and dancing and all just all the time. Like I sort of came out that way, but it wasn't until I think it was high school that I did a real play and was bitten by the bug and just loved everything about it. And from then on, I did some of the community theater in Phoenix, but I came to LA to go to college to, um, uh, well, college, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is an acting conservatory, mm -hmm. um, which I loved, absolutely loved it, did a two-year program there, and then I did a brief Shakespeare program in England um, right after that, and then I really wanted to work in television, and so LA, you know, LA just made sense, it was that was why I chose the school out here. Yeah. And um, just the long, hard road, pounding the pavement, you know, auditioning, and and, and it wasn't, it wasn't an overnight thing for me at all mm -hmm. in, in any way. And, and I've, I've always been an actor who um, probably because I came from a family that's more business oriented, mm -hmm. um, I have that sense of work ethic 
of, okay, this didn't work. Try this. Now try right. this, try this. I was, I was never one that like, didn't have my head shots. I was always like, no, I'm going to try this photographer. or I'm going to try this instead, mm-hmm. which as we all know when, you know, I was working three jobs, waiting tables, I think, cause you've got to, you got to spend all this money on your marketing material. Right. You think you're going to come out of college and Spielberg's going to be like, come sure. on over. I was, discover me at Hollywood and Highland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And instead it turns out you just serve those people food for a few years um, <laughs> or a lot of years in my case. Um, and so, yeah, that might have been a very long answer to a short question. Oh, and that was yeah, great. Because, no, because that's, I've loved this series. And those of you watching have heard so many stories of how people have gotten started. And I, we like to be straight, no chaser here. So I love, you know, it's like that, you know, 10, 15 year overnight success, right? Like, no, I'm definitely in that bucket. Yeah. (laughs) Me too. You know, so I love that, you know, when you were growing up, so you said you were like the storyteller of the family, but when you did sit and watch movies or TV shows, like, who were the kind of actors you were drawn to or what was it about them? Do you remember? I, what I remember, and I, it took me a little bit longer to, to sort of realize that actually what I loved more than anything was sitcom. I loved sitcom, but because I first fell in love with theater in practice mm-hmm. and that was my, the only thing that was available to me in, in Phoenix. And then because I went to a serious acting program, I didn't think about sitcom at all you know you think you all think in a program like that that you want to be Meryl Streep right (laughs) so I didn't I I wish I had sort of had that realization earlier that actually what I love are are sitcoms and and so that is what I remember watching and loving as as a kid and as a teenager I remember special shows I would watch with my dad or with my mom and I came from a family a divorced family and I remember sitcoms being something that was like a break a break from some of the hardship that we were going through as a family. And, and I remember theater being that as well. Once I started to love theater, it was like, Oh, my family's all in one room together watching one thing. Um, And I see a smile on my mom's face and smile on my dad's face and my sisters. And so Mm -hmm. I I think that was definitely a part of me falling in love with um, performing in that capacity was um, feeling the, the lightness and the escape that it brought to my own nuclear family. And so when I realized that through, um, you know, just getting to to work as co-stars and then guest stars, and I was on more sets, um, I had this light bulb moment. I was doing one scene on The Office, uh, one just little scene with Steve Carell and Rain Wilson, and it was the most fun day. And, And I'd been doing a lot of those guest stars where I was getting like killed or I was like, (laughs) <laughs> you know, the, the witness or the, like I was crying, right. I would go to a CSI or something and spend a week opening my heart up and, you know, mm-hmm. crying on the witness stand. And then I went and did this one day on the office and I just thought, no, that's what I want to do. That's, that's what I love. And that changed everything for me. Mm, t- well, tell me, tell me, how did that change? So what should, was it this because of that internal shift within you? It's, you know, I'm all about magnetic and what we draw to us. Was it just like, but those are shows you started to target or like, how did that change? Yeah, it sort of, it changed everything. I, I think it helped me cut, you know, when you're a young actor and you're just trying anything, whether it's, I don't know what the modern day version of sending postcards <laughs> is now, or if you still send, probably not because there are no physical casting offices anymore, but you know, you're always trying new things. I'm going to do this play and I'll invite cast directors to this play and your list of casting directors in Los Angeles is, you know, 100, 200 offices right. long, right? So when I had this realization of actually, I just want to focus on sitcoms, it cut that list down to this. Mm-hmm. And then it also made, um, what kind of rep do I want? Like it made that so much easier. What kind of photographer am I going to shoot with for my headshots? What should my reel be like? Um, And to be frank, things changed pretty quickly. Um, I was doing a lot of improv purely for fun, not as a strategic career move, but through improv, the kind of reps, agents, and managers that focus on comedy were watching me perform. And I got to sign with great people, some of whom are still my reps now. And it was also so easy for me to communicate them and uh, communicate to them in a rep meeting when they're like, what do you want? 
for 10 years, you know, you say, I want whatever. I just, I I was saying like, I just want to work. I just want to work. That's not tangible to them, but Mm -hmm. to go in and say, I want to be on a half hour sitcom, um, an ensemble comedy. It made their job so much easier too, as far as they knew exactly who to call. If they were going to set up general meetings, they knew what to send me in for, or even what kind of class I was going to take. What skill set did I need to uh, work on? The yeah. same way, if, if I really wanted to be in Marvel movies, you know, you would take stunt classes and you would take mocap classes on top of your acting classes. Um, yeah. it, just, it just narrowed down all of my choices and gave me clear ideas of what I needed to do. And then I think, I think that helped, um, in hindsight, I think it helped make me a bit more hireable because to the industry, all of a sudden there was a simplicity to, oh, she does this thing. Right. We, when we want this, we call Chelsea. Yeah, I think it helped. It, what that was a, for me, that was when one job started to lead to the next job versus starting over every time and auditioning and auditioning. It started to become um, it started to have a bit more of a snowball effect. Yeah, I can see that. I, I feel like I'm in a space of that myself where yeah. you know, there's been some trust built in an in mm-hmm. area and it's not a hard decision to make. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I love that when you when you started getting on these sets from starting from the office with a, a, a role with Steve, Steve Carell, as you would watch and do co-star and guest stars, there's always somebody, you know, especially when we think about theater, like even though there could be a huge ensemble, there could be, you could find someone in the mm-hmm. back, your eye just goes to them for some reason, they're giving something. So especially in an ensemble comedy, when you're even on set watching and observing who are the actors, you don't have to give me names, but what is it about certain actors that just I don't know that have a spark to you and what do you think that spark is well with comedy I think it's definitely a sense of giving it's a sense of community it's something that I loved about improv you're you are not a good improviser if you are selfish or if you only know what's funny on you Mm. that doesn't make you good at improv at all um what makes you great at improv is learning the actors around you and knowing what's funny on them and taking every opportunity you have to set them up to do that thing. And so I'm always most interested in performers that I see consistently doing that in their work. Of course, they're hilarious. I mean, you're you're not going to even want to do comedy or be drawn to comedy unless it appeals to you. And you you probably have a good sense of humor yeah. um, and you probably know what's funny on you. But but. I'm always drawn to the roles that um, everybody else kind of reacts to. I s- no, no, that's not the right way to say it. Where you're uh, having the reaction? I'm trying to think of the, you know, somebody like a Jason Bateman, who's actually the straight man in the middle of a crazy world. Um, <laughs> right. I love a character like that because Jason Bateman is pretty much always in every project. Letting, he's the audience. He's letting us know what's funny. Right. Um, and he is brilliantly funny in and of himself. I mean, yeah. he, he can he can kind of do it all. But one of the things I think he does almost like no one else in this business is that he anchors something and he enables everyone else to be a sort of do a little bit more of a broad comedy around him mm-hmm. because everything's going to feel truthful and real because Bateman grounds it. He grounds it in reality. Yeah. Um, and I find that to be a very giving style of comedy in that it's, he's really setting everybody else up to do that thing that they do so well. Ooh, that's so juicy. And you're so, I love to watch. It doesn't matter what I'm watching him in. You're absolutely right. He does bring so that. Good. And it could be the, it could just be this tiniest reaction. Yeah. Or his eyes, even on like Ozark, you like, it could be murders happening. And he, yes. Yeah. <laughs> why am I tickled? At yeah. Jason is Spim is one of those actors where he sort of lets you know what you're supposed to feel, you know, right. as you're, as you're watching something. Oh, I love that. That's so juicy. I mean, I just love, I hope you're, those of you watching are, are inspired. I, I just, I, what I'm loving to hear in for the first time from you is just the be really tapping in to what brought you joy because it's really tempting as artists you can look at you. You look at your friends. Well, they're doing voiceovers. Well, they do ADR. And well, they do you know comedy. They do drama. Like I want to do it all. Like and then, but what do what do you really, really connect to? And that starts yeah. to almost feel effortless. Of course, you prep and do your professional work. But when it just when you said 
I just had so much fun. That's what draws me in. And I love that when you show up on a set, you know, so this whole, the purpose of this whole podcast series is really to remind each and every one of you that we are all magnetic and magical and special and have something very unique to bring to the market. So Chelsea, what do you know for sure? This is like my Oprah moment. (laughs) Okay. What do you know for sure? is your superpower when you step on a set or in an audition like what's undeniable about you that you know for yourself no one has to tell you about it as a performer or a, or as like a, as a person yeah. as a as a person or performer like when you walk into a room or on a set like there's something about you that you know is your unique gift what is that i hope it's that i care deeply about the people that I work with. And I don't even like to think of it in in terms of who we work for or who works for us. I don't like to think about the hierarchy of things, even though there is obviously this built-in structure to things, but um, I love, I love the community of making something together, whether that's a play or an indie film or a TV show or a commercial, whatever it is. Um, And I care very much, probably too much as a younger actor, um, but is in a more healthy place now. (laughs) I care very much that the people that I'm working with and that that everybody's having a good time and everybody has the ability to um, bring their best selves to the work that day. Yeah, I love that. Only because you asked the way you asked me back. If you were to answer this as a performer, when you're on camera, what is that thing that is unique to Chelsea? What is it like? I'll give you an example. For me, I know I bring a natural sense of grace and elegance, mm-hmm. to a bit of gravitas. Like I know that's when you, if that's what you, I don't have to try to do that. I know I, when I walk in a room, that is just what comes off of me. Yeah. And I know that serves a lot of the characters that I get to step into. So yeah. what would that that special bit of seasoning be for you? I think it might be a bit of a spin on that. I think people assume that about me. Like I tend to get, um, I would audition a lot for roles that are, um, I have a pointy nose and a pointy chin. And I think something about that looks and feels um, like, I don't know, like like she's more of a mature character, but I myself am, am very much kind of a, uh, jeans and t-shirts kind of like quirky low-key person <laughs> and sure. I think that um I think the sense of uh, it's I'm just trying to think of so the last the the long the two roles just recently that I played one being on fresh off the boat and then the new one that's going to be on call my agent they both are women who are perceived to be one thing mm. and then turns out they are something completely different in different ways on fresh off the boat, she was perceived to be this, this trophy wife. And then it turned out that she was, was so much more and, and was ended up being, you know, the best friend of Constance Wu's character. Mm-hmm. I can't say what it is on call my agent yet. Um, but, but, you know, you're going to think one thing of this character and then you're going to find, you're going to strip down the layers and find out some very different things about her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if that's a clear enough answer, but I think, um, or maybe it's just that I'm drawn to roles like that. Yeah, I think there's something there's something interesting about uh, I'm trying to find the find the vocabulary for it. There's something interesting about it's like don't be fooled by like don't be fooled by the cover. Like you can almost cloak almost yeah. like you can cloak yourself well. And then that leaves room for just, I don't know, there's that might even be a sense of mystery to me that almost feels mysterious in a way because I don't know what I'm gonna get. And yeah. then revealed. I, people used to say not used to say to me a lot when I was younger. Um, I think because if I'm not talking, I, I must have bitchy resting face or something. They used to say to me all the time, I thought, um, oh, I thought you were going to be mm. a bitch. Or I thought I thought I was going to be intimidated by you. And then you know, the second I open my mouth, they're like, oh, you're just a big old nerd. Like, who cares? <laughs> I think yeah. that, um, you know, and that used to really hurt my feelings when I was younger. Because I was like, why? So when I'm quiet, I look scared. Yeah. I don't know what to do with that. 
I used to get the same thing. I used to get the same yeah. thing. I mean, I still do get the same thing. Also be very tall. Being yeah. a lot of it is like, I would be shy in a yeah. new environment. So I would just observe for a moment and that came off as aloof. And yeah. And then, again, once you started talking to me, but Hey, yeah. those, are the, the, those are for the winners. Those who get to talk to me and find out the truth. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I love that. No, I mean, even though we couldn't quite find the the right, the exact wording, I I'm seeing it very clearly. I'm seeing you as you see this make an assumption, and then then you're able to show us this layer. And I think that's so that's so juicy. And I think that is within itself its own superpower. Like you'll think you're gonna get this, but watch, and then this other un- part of the onion gets. Mm. Revealed. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. What role was it? What paid role? was it for you that proved to yourself i'm good at this a paid role i mean i think i you know um there was a, a an independent romantic comedy that i made with joe williamson and philip boyd uh two actors that are in our our pilot group and i i was already at the point in my career where i was working steadily and, and and not waiting tables anymore and all that but we made this little rom-com and the lead character um was so you know sometimes you pick up the material and you're like this is just like a comfortable pair of jeans I know exactly yeah. what to do with this and mm-hmm. I just love this and I was so glad that I got to do it um and that's how I met those two um and I felt I think I, I, I think it was so much nice for all of us. We had so much fun making that movie. And even though it was just a small movie, yeah. you know, to feel like, oh, we're, we're leading this movie. Like we are, we're doing this um, and it's good. And, you know, like, I think, um, I think that was one of those roles for me where I felt like, um, cause I gravitate towards supporting characters personally, mm-hmm. um, partly because I don't, I don't, I don't know the idea of fame scares the hell out of me like I don't want, I don't want much to do with that um but this is a small movie so it wasn't you know it wasn't like it was gonna blow up or anything but it was really fun to also get to lead a movie and feel like oh, okay and I can do this too mm-hmm. um and yeah I think that might be the role and it was there was a lot of comedy to it there was also a lot of drama it was you know there was just a lot in there I I in a in a different way the the um the call my agent experience the the show that i that's coming out here soon. Um, that felt like stepping into another league in so many ways. And I felt beyond grateful that I got to be a part of it and that I got to play the role, um, that I played. And so I think that was another one of those moments for me in my career of getting a a big at bat that felt like, well, they, you know, they believe in me to do this and I can do this. And then when it was all said and done, I felt like I really, I did it. Like I did what I wanted to do and I felt really good about it. Yeah. I call that graduation. We can graduating. I'm in a space right, right now where that's happening Mm -hmm. on a new project and the knowing within me is like, oh, duh, of course I can do this, but it's still like, oh, y'all think I can do it too? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Of course. You always have this, there's like this bedrock layer of, I know I can do this or I wouldn't have given up my life to be here. Right. And then on top of that are all these layers of, does anybody else know I can do right. this? And then you get your <laughs> shot and you're like, can I do this? <laughs> you, that don't, it all get, all those insecurities get kicked open every time I think we take a step forward. Yes. You know? Yes. I'll, I dare say Beyonce still gets nervous about many things, you know, stepping into a new tier. And I think it's important to know it doesn't ever just go away, but yeah. it's, it keeps you, I think it keeps you grounded, keeps you humble, keeps you hungry. Um, because at the end of the day, even when we are sharing the screen with maybe a bigger name or bigger celebrity, 
they, we all have the same goal of doing an amazing job. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's easy for people to forget that. You shared a bit earlier when we first started about your journey coming from Phoenix, moving to LA to go to school, working your way, working tape, waiting tables and doing all the things I do, you know, with everybody I've talked to like to take a moment just to really talk about the reality of ebbs and flows and the ebbs and flows look different for everybody. The ebbs and flows could be, you know, working for a while, then it's just quiet for a while, or it could just be that, you know, coming so close to a a huge opportunity that you could think could change your life or change your, the trajectory of your career. And it doesn't pan out. How have you dealt with, how do you make, I'm curious to know maybe how you dealt with it back in the day versus now Um, the ebbs and the flows of the business, the emotional roller coaster of it all? I think it's probably different or it has been different for me, depending on my age and, you know, where I am in life. And, um, there you're right. It's always, it, you don't have to be out here for too long before you're going to know somebody or you yourself are going to pop and you watch, you watch someone pop and then you watch it slide to back down and then pop again and slide back down. And it's, it's, rare that you're going to pop and just go up, 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 up and stay there. Nobody really stays there. Even if you're at the very, very top, you're sliding down and climbing back up and sliding down and climbing back up. That's the nature of the business. There's no way out of that. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're the kind of, um, you know, there, there are so few pockets of this industry where you have full control. I'm trying to think of, there are like a handful of filmmakers that are willing to sort of personally finance and release their films. Mm-hmm. And even those filmmakers are subject to the audience's response to that film. Yeah. So there's just no version of a creative life that doesn't include those ups and downs. And I think figuring out how we as individuals handle those lows it is almost one of the most important parts of our job, mm-hmm. uh, just to hang in and hang through those hard times. And I think it's been in different ways. I mean, I always tried to have them be healthy ways. Obviously there are a lot of unhealthy ways of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I, you know, whether it's exercise or friendships, um, family, I think having a full life outside of the industry is hugely important. I think getting to a place where it can be your job and not your whole life is very important. Um, I know people at the tippy tippy top who are unhappy because they don't have balance. They just don't have balance in their lives and and it means too much to them. They really, really, really want to stay at the tippy tippy top. And that's so much of their mental energy is dedicated to not sliding down the mountain that they're not even enjoying being there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, I, I think definitely the number one thing is just to have a full life outside of this business and, and let it be a part let it be a slice of the pie, not the whole pie, which is obviously harder to do when we're younger, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I just think about, you know, it's, it's that feeling. And I don't know if you can relate to this of, you know, thinking about roles you don't get. Mm-hmm. You no, know, you spent the time, energy, you know, you felt good about it. You don't get it. Maybe you get to producers or have it even test. And it's those moments of like, Oh, like it's the when. Yeah. I'm t- like, I'm tired. Like, yes. yeah. when, right. And then, because it always feels, it can be easy to feel like the next role will be the will be the yeah. one. But yeah. then what ends up happening is, it's the one for that moment. But then there's another one, and then there's another one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, so what you know? What did that look like when? there was a role you didn't get who like who was the first person you call like was it like I cried for two days like did, what what did that look like what you know it's like? funny it just happened it, it it actually happened when I was when I had just joined the pilot group because when I joined your guys's group I was coming off of six years on fresh off the boat and you know there was all this excitement coming off of a show because that was my first series regular so you're on something for six years which gives you know truly gives you a financial cushion to weather the blows yeah. um but then you also think, oh, there's all this momentum to build off of. And now I can move on to the next thing. And what happened was I did get great at bats. I got, I went through the first pilot season and I got so close. And I, I don't know if I was talking about it in our group or not. I probably was just kind of like sitting on it, but yeah. two times in a row, 
Um, I went in for tests as the showrunner's choice, the studio's choice, like every, everything looked like it was lined up and twice in a row um, at the network level, things happened. One happened where they were just like, we don't think she's the right person. One happened that had absolutely nothing to do with me and like, the entire demographics of the cast changed. Um, okay. And I, you know, I was, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because when you're that close and you know, you know, you, from the, you, yeah, it. <laughs> you know, from the showrunners, you know, from the studio, like, you, you know, you don't have it yet, but you're like, everybody's like, cause, cause in their mind, you know, they're so invested in this show. And so they're like, we found our person. So they're so excited to have found you that they're sharing that excitement with you. And then it doesn't go through. And I felt the one, the one where the network was just like, she's just not the right person for it. That one felt really bad because it was like, oh, they just didn't see what everybody else saw. Yeah. And what did I do? And like, you know, I, I had reached out to the director and was like, I didn't seal the deal for you guys. And I feel terrible. And she was like, no, it's inexplicable. We're devastated. We don't know what happened. <laughs> we, we're, we're not privy to the information of why they thought you were wrong for it. Um, and, but that one felt really sad. Um, and then the other one was really heartbreaking because it, it had some logistics involved that were really good for me and my family. Um, mm -hmm. It shot at the studio that's right around the corner from the house. Like <laughs> all these things. I loved them, but like it was everything. Yeah. And, and that one just, the sand shifted underneath me and, you know, the network and studio both were like, we are so sorry. And, you know, I think we have to remember that we've made fans. Yeah. We didn't get the job and that's the thing we're focused on. But one thing I understand a little bit better now, knowing more writers and more showrunners, um, it's devastating for them too. So there's a person out there that didn't get to hire you. They was really sure that you were right for their show. And probably multiple people, because at that point you've got a director, executive producer, or studio executives who are rooting for you. And uh, one of those shows went to series, one did not. And the one that went to series, the day that it actually got picked up to series was so hard. It was so hard. That day was hard. And actually the person who ended up getting it is a friend of mine. So I'm really glad it went to series, but, but that was like, oh man, that really, that one turned into a real job. Like that was going to be a long term. The day it got picked up to series, I got the audition for call my agent. Wow. And I was literally crying in my bed when the audition came in and I read it and I texted my agent and was like, this is a great audition. I hadn't seen the French show. I was like, this is, this is the best material I've read in a long time. Like, this is really good. Oh, wait, so this is a, not the French because I'm watching no. the French version. Okay, so you're right. Okay, so, so what this is, is um, a British remake. So it's an English language remake of the French show. Oh, oh, even juicier. Yeah, yeah. so it's, so okay. it's, it's a British TV show and it's this okay. amazing showrunner named John Morton who is just, I mean, his writing is heavenly and there's one American character on it. And that's what I was auditioning for. Um, and it was a very competitive situation and it was just the timing. It was the right role. It was just all the timing, all the pieces fit together. And, um, and, and I got the part and I, and, and it is my dream job. So if I had gotten those, either of those two other jobs, I would have had to watch this show come out and feel like, oh, man, I'd love to be on a show like that. <laughs> so I, you know, it's kind of just weathering the storm. And it's my friend Susanna always says, it's like you're at a bus stop and you're, you're just so certain that's your bus and it passes you by. And the reality is that that was not your bus. Another bus is coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you just have to wait it out. You kind of have to wait it out sometimes. Oh, that's so juicy. I, I have tears are like right here because I'm, <laughs> I've, I'm seeing you in the bed post test, hearing about this show going to series. Oh. I'm, I'm like seeing you like just needing to sit in. I've, I've, a lot of actors I've yeah. talked to during this series have just said, look, it just, I cry for two days and then I'm, you know, or I'm, yeah. something else comes that distracts me. Like, it's just part of it, you know, and imagine had you just been so distraught that you didn't give your all to this next audition. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That like you just like, you know, like, so that's the word for y'all watching. Like, 
it is like weathering the storm, but the next one could be it. And you're so right. You know, even for the show, I'm on a show called Snowfall on FX. I auditioned for that show every season. Did you? And I didn't book it until season four. And even on season four, I read for three roles prior to the one that I booked. So they loved you. (laughs) They loved you, but all you're feeling is they won't hire me. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And even on Instagram, after we had our premiere party, uh, a Jeannie Bacharach, who's the casting director, she commented on the post and she said, right role, right time. Yeah. So stay encouraged y'all. Like, you're hearing it from someone who is working just like, you know, if you're not working a lot, it's, it, it just changes the, the level, you know, I have to I often say this doesn't may not always sound encouraging, but the level of disappointment gets higher. Like the more oh, that's you're up there. so true. That is so <laughs> true. Yes. Yeah, it is. You know, the co-star you didn't get, oh, there'll be another co-star on that show, yeah. but that, you know, role that could potentially change everything it's it's harder you're you go to a test and you're signing your contracts ahead of time you see what you're i was talking to somebody she she had it was a series regular that she didn't get we were talking about you see the money and you're seeing the (laughs) like just all the cruelty it's absolute cruelty the test process you're in the room with the other women which like as i was saying before that's incredibly important to me that like i choose to go through that process with those women yeah. Like we are here for each other and one of us is going to get an awesome job at the end of this. We don't know who it's going to be and it's totally out of our hands, but like, I've got your back. You want to run your lines? Let's go run lines. You yeah. are you feeling, I can see somebody when they get that shallow breath and they might need to just yeah. talk for a minute. Just, Hey, where are you from? Did you, cause sometimes I've, you know, one of those tests I'm talking about, one of the women had been flown over from England. So imagine that. She yeah. was flown over and sitting in a hotel room and her nerves were just going like this, you know? So before our test, she was coming out of her skin. Yeah. yeah. And that's so gem- That is generous. And that is, and that's, that speaks to a level of which I would say just from talking to you for this long one-on-one today, it's been such a treat. What I'm feeling just picking up from you is you have a, you have a unique way you can see, you see people. And I think even through, whether it's conversation, even picking that up, like you have your own audition to do, but you're feeling, you can sense someone's shallow breath, right? Oh, for and sure, I'm, yeah. You know, like that's, it's a connectivity. I feel like that's coming off from you. And I'm sure that serves you in your work too, especially you love to do comedy and sitcoms. Like how you were talking about, a good, you know, thinking about being a generous actor and leaving space for other people to shine. Like that me- means you have to read people. You have to be yeah. in tune. So, yeah. which I think we all, we all have that in us. I mean, I, yeah. I think I would have been, I was either going to be an actor or a therapist. <laughs> I think <laughs> I was going down, well, I was, I think in hindsight, it was going to be one of those two things. And so I do, I, I mean, I, I'm drawn to the people study aspect of it and then trying to, um, in, as my character recreate what someone's feeling, but even as our characters, what we're f- always focused on in life or what, not always, some, some, some characters are very inward, but often we're actually focused on the other people in the room and what kind of impact we have on them. And um, in reality, that, at least for me, that's what makes me happy about the work. So once I started to realize that, I think auditions got a little easier for me too, because it stopped being so like, I'm going to get this perfect. I have to do this right. No, what this is about is a casting office that has a job to do and other actors in the room that are like, super anxious and we're all trying to bring our best selves to this and just having compassion for everybody in the process um because it's difficult like everyone's job whichever side of the table you're on has its own difficulties its own challenges and its own stress and it helps take me out of my own anxiety um too it's not you know there's a self-serving aspect of it as well it helps me if i focus on the other people in the room um not be so anxious or in, involved in myself you know yeah I love that that's a nugget y'all that's a nugget <laughs> final thing before we wrap you know I want you for a moment to hold space and visualize the actor watching this right now who's seasoned been in the game maybe 15 plus years and it's just been slow and they're ready to yeah. throw in the towel and also when you think about the young Chelsea fresh out of school or fresh into town and but they don't can't they can't seem to catch a break yet, and they're both are wondering: Am I even good at this? Should I? Am I just 
kidding myself. I should just, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I don't, I don't have what it takes. What words of wisdom or love can you just pour into their heart just to give them a bit of encouragement? I would guess that you are not here and you didn't even try to do this unless you absolutely have what it takes. Um, it's the rare actor that you come across that really is very out to lunch and like doesn't have what it takes. Almost everyone who's out here hustling, grinding is somebody that's amazing. Like truly, there's so just in Los Angeles, there is so much talent in this city. Um, the bitter truth of the entertainment industry, though, is that it's not a meritocracy and we don't get the parts we deserve um like ever um sometimes we get roles we didn't deserve and oftentimes we don't get the role we did deserve meaning were you the best actor that day it's a giant puzzle so they're just putting together a giant puzzle with a ton of moving pieces that we don't have access to as the auditioning actor so i think it's not so much about your talent my guess is that your talent is pretty special and phenomenal and that you have what it takes I think the real question is, are you happy with a life that's uncertain? Because this life is going to be uncertain wherever you land in the industry. The only thing that can ever possibly change is your financial picture, which is significant. That's, that's not insignificant. Um, but that's the only thing that can change. The self-esteem bit, the need for approval, the bids for love, all of that kind of stuff. This business can't fix that. This business will make all of that worse, actually. I think that stuff actually gets harder the more successful you get. The, the, single, the only single thing this business can do for you is pay your bills. So if you find whether you are on either side of that spectrum you just talked about, um, I, especially if you're on the spectrum of um, where we might be, where you're like, oh, I've worked a lot. And I really, now I know all the things that I didn't know before. Um, do I still take this on? Do I, it's not, does this business choose me? It's, do I choose it? Mm -hmm. do I choose to be here. Do I choose the suffering that it takes to be a part of this? And guess what? There is nothing wrong with saying, no, I don't choose you anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't choose this anymore. I choose something else for myself. I choose to go back to school. Um, or I choose to go to my, uh, I choose to move home. Um, I choose to have a family instead. I choose to be closer to my mom. I choose to go work for my dad's company, whatever your situation is. Um, I've had more friends leave in the last two years than ever. Um, and at our age, you're going to have friends leave every year. Mm -hmm. um, and I have never had a friend return. <laughs> <laughs> I have watched friends move on to different fulfilling work in their life. Um, and do they miss it? Um, of course, I imagine so. Um, but for the most part, I've watched people move on to things that really feed their soul in a way that this business can't. Um, so that's that's what I really think. I, th I think it comes down to, do I choose you, not, not do you choose me? The other end of the spectrum that's the young actor, that's probably more in the realm of self-generate. You, you, you have an opportunity now that we didn't have coming up. You have the internet, you can make right. stuff with your iPhone. You can, you can generate content. You can put yourself, you, you really just need a team whose phone calls are answered. That's mm -hmm. the difference between you working and not working. And it's the only difference. It's not your talent. It's just, do you have an agent that can get you the right auditions? So if you are that young actor trying to navigate this industry, that's that's kind of the only thing you need to know. And so you need to put content out that gets you one of those agents, mm -hmm. um, which which was something we didn't have. Ooh, let me tell you, Chelsea, let me tell <laughs> you. If I and I did a lot with what I had. Yeah. But man, if I had this, what we have now, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work what have you got now now. But yeah. back then, yeah, the, the difference, the difference in, of the access to showcase who you are. Yeah. And when I'm mentoring actors, I'm telling them, well, I haven't booked this and I haven't booked, what kind of role do you want to do? Well, do you have proof? Can I see it? Did you create something? Yeah. Put it on Instagram. Show me that you can do it. Yeah. Of course. You know? So, oh, you said so many amazing things. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm, I can't wait. They're all helpful. I can't play this. I can't wait to play this back. I think the biggest thing you, the, the, that you just said about, like, this is here to pay your bills. Like, this is a job like anything else. Yes, you're gifted at it, but so is the engineer who's gifted at, you know, doing that, you yeah. know? So you, you don't ever have to stop acting. You can live anywhere you want to live and do theater. So don't don't make it about your self-esteem and your creativity and your talent, because I just promise you that's not it. It is so simple. It's your rep. It's your reps. It's your agents. <laughs> it's your managers. It's are any of the right people seeing what you can do. That's it. That's right. that's genuinely what it is. Yeah. And keep creating things and creating your up, upgrading your portfolio, your tools, your yeah. toolbox to make them make it easy for them to to pitch you and sell you and get your name out there. Yeah. Ooh, Chelsea Crisp, this has been <laughs> juicy. Not crispy, it's been juicy. It's been juicy. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you wondering, I'm gonna put any links Chelsea has that she wants to share in the show notes. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, you can watch her at Call My Agent coming out soon. I can't wait to see it. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me today. This has been, I mean, truly, each of these conversations that I've had in this series just just for, you're all filling me up too. It's just like so good to hear your journey and and you're such a positive light. And I love watching you on screen too. It's so much fun. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Thank for you for everything that you're doing for actors because I also we did talk about this, but I I you know found back in the day the handful of people that are doing what you're doing. And yeah, you need that guidance. It's it's yeah. important for for actors to listen to people like you who have a really good overview of the industry and can help with some strategic decisions about about what to do and where to go. So yeah. it's good that you're doing this. Yay! Thank you so much, Chelsea. Everyone, thank you for watching Booking Magnet Magic. Make sure you tune in to the rest of this series. It's so good and it's life changing. Truly, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye guys.